important Big 12 play. In fact, Tim Welsh, he's Kansas's leading scorer in conference play. There's no question about it. Leadership was a question coming into the season with all these youngsters on the floor. For Bill Self, Nadir Tharp has been the answer. For TCU, Kean Anderson coming off a 23-point game earlier this week against Oklahoma, plus two talented freshmen and Brandon Parrish and the center, Kavar Shepard. We're about ready for the opening tip. Close to a packed house here at the DMC. A lot of Kansas fans in attendance as well. TCU in the 2-3 zone. They're going to pack it in and make Kansas beat it from the outside and dig in on the box. The double on Joel Embiid. Perry Ellis. Embiid on the putback. Can't get it to go. Follows his own shot and he's fouled. And Ishraf, Tim Welsh with you. Joel Embiid going to the line. The improvement that we have seen in his game from when the season started to now has been exponential. What can you say? Just his natural feel for the game. The footwork is there. The timing, the block shots on the defensive end of the floor. And you just saw just on that possession, the quick second jump, the ability to keep the ball high and get it back up on the rim. Bill Self, head coach for Kansas, four straight. 30 win seasons. He's averaged 30 wins per season since becoming the head coach of the Jayhawks. Embiid gets both free throws, and Kansas scores on its first possession when these two played last year in this building. Kansas went more than seven minutes without its first point. And he shroffed Tim Welsh, Kansas, and TCU here at Daniel Meyer Coliseum. And Joel Embiid cleans the glass. And here's Andrew Wiggins pulling up from the baseline, 4 0 Jayhawks. Well, from one fabulous freshman to the other, that's what Kansas has been doing as of late the resistance at the rim and then the run out to Wiggins. TCU seeking its first conference win. 0 and 6 in league play. The Horned Frogs. Played Oklahoma close on Wednesday, but then lost in the final three and a half minutes. It was tied late. Kansas 5-0 and in league play. The last four wins against ranked opponents. Amrick Fields tries the three, and TCU on the board. A nice play by TCU. The roll in replace. They dragged the big fella down the lane and popped on the weak side with Fields. Entry pass. Embiid through the double team. Offensive rebound. Perry Ellis. That rims out. Here's Fields strong to the basket, and he's fouled. Well, TCU so far so good defensively. The 2-3 zone has made Kansas a little bit uncomfortable, but on the second shot attempts, TCU backside rebound has been a little bit weak. When they, but when they do get the ball out on the floor, Fields, they will attack with Anderson at the top. And, they need to also look for Kavar Shepard on the low box. They tried to post him up on the first possession, but he didn't dig down hard enough for, for low post position. They can go at Embiid a little bit with Shepard. He has that ability to score at the rim, and Embiid sometimes will get in foul trouble. There is Trent Johnson, second season as the head coach at TCU. He's been the coach of the year in three different leagues. One of two for Fields, who comes into this game battling a bit of a stomach bug. And he's only about at 60, 65 percent, according to his head coach, Trent Johnson, with the injuries that he's had. Broken hand and coming off the torn ACL he suffered last year. Kansas, they worked on movement against this zone. Right now, they're very uneven and a little unorganized. Nearly a backcourt violation. Here's Thorpe, the lob for Embiid. And Embiid with the body control gets the two. Well, Kavar Shepard basically body slammed him almost out of bounds, but you just see the strength of Embiid held his own inside, went back up and got the ball. The freshman Brandon Parrish no good. Ellis the rebound. Open look for Wiggins, and that goes. Was created by Nadir Tharp, just pushing the ball before the zone gets set, driving it into the gap, drawing two defenders, kicking it out to the open Wiggins on the wing. 
Wiggins, the much ballyhooed freshman out of Canada, touted as the top high school prospect since LeBron James. Here's Kansas on the break. Ellis all the way. Followed by Sheldon, not there in the rebound by TCU's talented Frost Shepard. Well, Bill Self lamenting missed layups by our team. We got to just finish those plays at the rim. Jarvis Ray tries to get it over and bead. He does. Got it over the basket as well. Now again, the length of Kansas. Just a major problem for TCU. They've got to move the men and try to isolate on a box. Embiid fouled, and early on, there seems to be a concerted effort by Kansas to get the ball inside to Embiid. Well, they also have to push the ball ahead against the zone, and you saw that the push first by Tharp kicked it to Ellis, and then the ability to space the court in Wiggins, just when he has got his feet set on the wing, he is just almost automatic. Embiid's numbers this season, they don't pop out at you. A little more than 11 points per game, better than seven rebounds per game, but he only averages about 23 minutes per contest. When he can learn how to stay out of foul trouble and play more minutes, it's scary to think how good this Kansas team can be. Well, I think the nation and all of us are still trying to figure out how great he is, and his greatness just amazes us with every game. I think his teammates still don't know how good he can be. I think they can throw him the ball even more than they do. Kansas already off to a much better start compared to the last year's game here at the DMC where Kansas scored just 13 points in the entire first half. Back to NB, there's the double. Zembi, but no, thank you. He's ready to go tonight. He's putting his nose right in, calls the ball, calls for the ball as the trailer. And now on the other end of the floor, you probably see one glaring weakness right now of Joel Embiid's game, and that's being able to be a capable passer out of the trap down low. He's got to make that quick move and turn and face. He's a little bit straight up when TCU is sending the double team at him. They're sending that forward down on the low box out of the 2 3 zone, and right now he's a little upright and uncomfortable against that trap. You know, we were talking at shoot around earlier today. Kavar Shepard nearly had his first dunk of the season before the foul. He's about 6'10. You would think, playing the position he plays, he'd have at least a couple of dunks. That's a good looking freshman. I like him. He's got a really fantastic hands. Nice feet for the game. And very active in the middle of his own against MB. No double team on MB this time. Pass and beat the trailer. There was nice recognition. We'll take back what we said. He was a very capable passer, but that was from the high post. Good high low action. Fields pulls up and beat clears. So the thing is with TCU, they have to be aware of him on the low box. <laughs> right there. For TCU, you have to have somebody with a body on Joel and be on the back side because Kansas will just do that over and over and over. They will attack and just throw the ball right up in the rim. Seven points already for Embiid. Hudson Price drives baseline. His shot.
starting to take notice. They can be special this year. They can be special in March. Well, Phil South knew he had to be five stars. But I'm not sure his schedule would do that because they can't have five stars. Now they know who they are. So they know who this man is. Because America has come down. This may be the best big man in all of college basketball. It's the big man. It's a forward. It's really in the rim. It's a change to the game. Both ends of the floor. It's just easy with the catch of every just not only a joy to coach every day, it's joy to be around because he loves playing and he wants to be coached every day and he's a great teammate. And goodness, stop talking about him going to the NBA. I love well, let's keep him here for at least another year. You know, he's hinted that this may not be his only season with Kansas. With Andrew Wiggins, everybody knew coming in it was a one and done deal. But with Embiid, he's hinted a few times that he doesn't want to go until he feels he's ready. Well, whenever he goes, good luck. But let's enjoy the moment because it's fun to watch guys that are just fundamentally sound and just want to learn the game the right way. And he's playing for the right guy and on a team that's just growing every day with their three freshmen and five new starters. Key and Anderson's TCU's leading scorer, better than 15 a game. Shot clock down to three. Fields down the lane, finds the freshman Parrish. That was very good ball movement by TCU and Kansas. Not good rotation on the backside. Not sure what this is. I think Antonio Petty thought Bill Self wanted a timeout, but he was just barking at his team for not <laughs> rotating on the backside. Kansas five field goals they've assisted on each one. Ellis checked by Fields. Ellis lost it and that's a traveling violation as he couldn't control it in the air. A nice job by Trent Johnson coming out of the timeout changing a little bit of the rhythm on defense. Junking the two three for a few minutes and not letting get Kansas get comfortable going back to the soft man to man gave some good help in the middle of the floor. Some pressure from Kansas we saw it on the last possession as well. Anderson down the lane to Fields, rejected by Embiid. You can't go any stronger at the rim than Fields did, but Embiid just, again, the perfect timing. Shepard, his shot blocked by Embiid. Here comes Kansas, three on two. Wiggins is fouled on the way up. It's on Parrish. Well, there is no answer for this man. When he is at the rim, you better make the second and third pass, pump fake, and then dish it off because he will stay there and wait for you and keep waiting and go up right when you go up. He will not leave his feet until he sees that ball take flight. But the timing, the ability to move into spots quickly from lane, one side of the lane to the other. Wiggins shooting 85% from the line over his last 10 games. Kansas head coach Bill Self had an interesting quote on Wiggins earlier during the week. He said, Wiggins's play, it leaves you wanting more. And that wasn't necessarily an insult. You know, Wiggins is having a very good freshman season. The expectations were so ridiculous that people see it as maybe an underperformance. He's kind of fit quite well within the context of what this team wants to do, and that's overlooked. Absolutely, and he just he needs to get a little bit more of a dominating personality, a little bit more aggressive on the basketball floor. Whoa, 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 whoa. And temper starting to flare. Whoa, whoa. There we go, this is what we needed. I was waiting for the technical. I, I was wondering if, if they were waiting for someone to throw a punch, but you've got to clean that up real quickly. Double technicals have been issued. Frank Mason has been issued a technical for Kansas. Well, one thing you know, Anish, is the calendar gets creeping towards the month of February. Everyone gets a little bit on edge. Starts with the coaches, and of course, then it trickles down to the players, the fans. Uh, the officials, but you know, this is where right away well, the whistle's blown. You got to clean everybody out of there. I 
We'll go to the monitor and see if there was any extra, extra, extra activity. But uh, nothing more than a little feistiness on the floor. Well, you know, the fans here at TCU, the student section, certainly they've been reminding Kansas of what happened last year. But as we said off the top of the broadcast, it's a different Kansas team. All five starters from a year ago were gone. Andrew Wiggins, Embiid, Sheldon, Frank Mason. Those guys don't know what happened last year except from reading about it. Well, there's no question about it. And the guy on the other sideline, Trent Johnson, he's not going to back down. He's not, or his team is not going to back down for sure. I mean, he is a proven winner. Nevada, Stanford, LSU. He's going to get this thing right here at TCU. He's got a few years left to get it going because he's still building it with a lot of youngsters. But he's got some good looking young players and they're one thing they do do, and they lack in ability and depth, but they play hard, as you saw the other night against Oklahoma on the road. So Frank Mason gets one technical. The other issue to TCU's Brandon Parrish. And a good job there by Antonio Petty getting in there right away before things could get out of hand. Well the last thing you put on the board or you talk about when you leave the locker room is let's get the 50 50 boss and you know Kansas their staff talked about it said when they get after it get, get after those 50 50 balls that's when they started winning in the Big 12. And they've talked about maybe at some point during the pre in the pre conference games they weren't tough enough out there on the floor. Go back to the play in the Oklahoma State game Wayne Seldon or rather Monday night against Baylor Wayne Seldon going into the stands to save a ball even though he was out of bounds <laughs> the play was able to stand and, and Bill Self called that contagious the effort going all out. Well there's no question about it that the Big 12 title goes through Kansas but when you look at this conference from top to bottom there are a lot of contenders that are not going to just give them the trophy because there's a lot of talent here. They're trying to figure out, I believe, if there's any other technicals other than the ones they've called. You can review the play to see who the foul was on, and that's what's taking place right now. Yeah, I don't know if there's any foul per se. I believe they called the jump ball, but you're right. They may have come up with something else. Kansas 5 and 0 oh in the Big 12. TCU 0 oh 6 in conference. Lost a close game Wednesday against Oklahoma. The Horn Frogs did. TCU's just 2 and 22 since joining the Big 12 at the start of last season. The two wins against Kansas last year and also against Oklahoma last year. Well, I think both coaches understand that's okay. What just happened? I mean, we took it over the edge a little bit, but. That's it. We're going down to the floor. We're going to, have to get that ball. We're going to do it with toughness. Anderson had a look. Fields to Shepard. And yeah, foul on the floor. I like that set by TCU. Space the floor, reverse it, and post up Shepard right in the middle of the lane. He's got uh, the ability. To get to the rim, he's just they've got to look for him and give him a little space down low. Foul was on Landon Lucas into the game. Shepard shoots over Lucas, the rebound to Perry Ellis. Kansas without Tarek Black today, out with an ankle injury. So Lucas getting some minutes at the forward spot as Wiggins drops the jumper. TC right now giving Andrew Wiggins way too much space on the bounce into the lane. They've got to close him out, force him back to his left, get up in his chest. Wiggins has nine. Embiid has seven. That doesn't fall for Ray. Entry pass. Lucas. And a foul down low. And that's on Kavar Shepard. And that is the second on Shepard and TCU can ill afford to get their big Shepard and fields in foul trouble. They just do not have a lot of depth in the front court. Well, especially when the fouls are against Kansas backups. I mean, you want to protect the rim, but 
They've got to understand that maybe sw keep switching defenses. They gave the 2 3 an early look. But with beat out of the game, they don't have that player to throw over the top. But they've got to do a better job, TCO and Andrew Wiggins, understanding maybe. You forget it. There's been so much talk about Embiid and then the play of Tharp and Selden as of late. You almost sometimes you can forget about Andrew Wiggins, but you better not. Anderson, Ray, Fields, Michael Williams, Hudson Price. The five on the floor for TCU. For Kansas, Frank Mason, Wiggins, Ellis, Lucas, and the freshman Brandon Green. Fields working on Lucas. And Emmett Fields, stomach bug and all, gets it to go. Well, that's a good move by Emmett Fields. A nice offense by TCU, giving him space again. Kansas may look to go down on him a little bit and double the ball, give him a look, get the ball out of his hands in the lane. Beautiful spin move there by Ellis as he draws the contact. And he'll go to the line. When we come back, we will revisit what happened last year. TCU's historic upset of Kansas. Nothing short of amazing. Really. You can't find an adjective big enough for this. The first Big 12 victory in history. Their first ever win over a top five team. What an incredible upset here at TCU. We love it. TCU, we help. No, it was the worst team that Kansas has ever put on the floor since Dr. Naismith was there. I think he had some bad teams when he lost to Topeka YMCA and things like that uh, uh, in the first couple of years. But, but for, for the first half, there, there hasn't been a team play worse than that offensively. No, that, that hasn't happened. That was Bill Self after the loss to TCU last year. Topeka YMCA. There's a sign up in the crowd referencing what Bill Self said, and you look at what happened last year, TCU only 22 points in the first half, but Kansas only 13. The Jayhawks went more than seven minutes to start the game without a point. And for TCU, that was a signature win for Trent Johnson and really rewarded the program's faith in Trent Johnson and what he's trying to build for the future. It was a top five press conference of all last it year. Was. <laughs> it was. It the number was. One, number one upset, but then he topped it with those words. Uh, Bill is uh, a very humorous man at times, and uh, sometimes it's nice to self-inflict a little humor on not only yourself, but on your basketball team, and a little embarrassment, and it worked, by the way. That loss was the second of three straight at the time for Kansas. The Jayhawks, as we've mentioned, it's a totally different team this year. Five new starters, and Kansas comes in as arguably the hottest team in the nation five straight wins the last four all coming against ranked opponents the last team to do that North Carolina during the 96 97 season that's beat four straight ranked teams well this conference is just full of landmines and you throw in Texas now all of a sudden they're going to emerging as a, a player in this conference and the first team they beat on, on that gauntlet wasn't ranked at the time that's Oklahoma and now they're pushing towards I think their third, uh, they had their third road win in the league today. Oklahoma, yeah, winning at Texas Tech. Hudson Price traveled. He's the son of former NBA great Mark Price. Well, the bench for Kansas has been very important over the last three, four weeks. I think they've improved. They've given a lot of spark, a lot of toughness. Starts with Frank Mason, Brandon Green. Lucas giving them some nice minutes tonight already, so that's going to build their depth moving forward. I think they want, Bill wanted to give them more minutes in the preseason, just they played such a tough non-conference schedule. Offensive rebound, Lucas. Here's Green for three. Fields lost his balance. Kansas with numbers. Mason down the lane, and TCU gets back. It'll stay here, Kansas on a 10-2 run. Well, it's nice when you can bring in guys like Frank Mason and Brandon Green, and just spot up and perfect form from the top, and you think he knew he made that? 
Yeah, he knew. <laughs> Wayne Selden checks into the game for Wiggins. Selden without a shot attempt so far. We were at Kansas shoot around today, and a couple of times Bill Self was imploring his freshman to be more aggressive and to look for a shot. Well, I think they're a very unselfish group, and they don't want only any one player wants to take control. And sometimes that's good and okay, but other times you need somebody just to go get a basket. And Selden has done that at times when needed, especially in the Oklahoma game. That last foul on Jarvis Ray, already his third here at the 10 minute mark of the first half. Well, whether it's been against the 2 3 or man to man, Texas, or Kansas has stayed with their game plan, changing sides of the floor and trying to go inside with their size advantage. Sunday on ESPNU, can Clemson end the streak? The Tigers have lost 56 in a row at Chapel Hill. They get a reeling North Carolina team. And then at 8 Eastern, Cal visits UCLA in a Pac-12 battle. Last foul was on Joel Embiid, his first. Next Kansas foul puts TCU in the bonus. Kansas in the bonus. Embiid all the way out to guard Fields. Fields over Embiid. Christian Gore knocked it away. Last touch on Green. And TCU will keep it. Good hustle play there by the Brown transfer, Christian Gore. Again, another piece of Joel Embiid's game that it doesn't show up in the box score. Mostly the shot blocker usually can guard from box to box, but that time he went out on the floor and guarded Fields. Fields tried to go by him, he dropped step and cut him off. Price down the lane, wild shot, won't go. Green pushing, Ellis the flush. And a timeout by Trent Johnson with 9.26 to go as Kansas's lead is ballooned to 14. Well, Brandon Green has given Kansas a huge lift and coming up the court. Now look at Joel Embiid just on the attack. Great outlet pass. They fill in the lane, coming up the floor, and you see Perry Ellis co coming here. You see Brandon Green come change sides of the floor and then come back inside. He changes sides of the floor. TCU does it. Great recognition by Green and Ellis. Nice feel for the game, spacing out on the weak side. Kansas 8 of 15 from the field to start. They have been lights out shooting the ball since conference play started. 54% from the field in Big 12 play. Better than 40% from downtown. And inside the two-point arc, or the three-point arc, in league games, Kansas shooting better than 60%. One thing Bill Self wants to do is he wants to create a little bit more havoc on defense. Stay solid, but try to turn people over a little bit more than they have. Four down the lane, and they finally got one over Embiid. And he had to throw it up all, almost to the shot clock, but he got it done. Christian Gore, the transfer from Brown. Sheldon, open three off the side of the rim. Fields corrals the rebound. Here's Kean Anderson, and he's bumped. Foul is on Frank Mason, and Anderson to the line. Opening up the floor and trying to get Embiid out of position is key, and just a tick late. <laughs> but Gore, give him credit. Good body balance. Anderson's got a bit of a skin irritation, we were told. That's why he's got the bandage on the cheek. Leading the team in scoring and assists. And Trent Johnson said one of the things that Anderson has done well this season is he's been a leader. He has been a leader, and he's been a go-to scorer as of late. A guy that can really knock down shots, just push the pace, get into the lane. And he needs to do that even more tonight on misses. Make himself available for the outlet, and don't hesitate. Attack before Kansas can get set in that defense and be before the big fella number 21 gets back and sets 
Hunt sets up shop in the middle of the lane. Anderson is from Fort Worth. Ironically enough, one of the reasons he wanted to play for TCU was he wanted to play in the Big East. They're in a monster conference now. <laughs> to the Big 12. And got some good plans. They've got good young players here and some guys sitting out at Trent Johnson. The future looks bright. Wiggins to Embiid. And a nice move by Selden going baseline. Oh, excellent offense using Embiid as the post feeder. Got the ball into the high post. Very good look opposite for the finish. Wiggins shadowing Parrish. Here's Ray. And he's fouled. Kansas in control. The Jayhawks up a dozen. 7.41 to go in the half. Here in the studio with an update. It is over in East Lansing. Michigan with a five point lead. They will win by five. Keith Appling shot off the rim. Did not matter. Nick Stauskas. What a game Stauskas had. Making five threes with 19 points as Michigan. Now the lone unbeaten team in Big Ten Conference play. The two unbeatens overall in action today. Syracuse wins. Wichita State is up. And he. And they drop alongside Tim Welsh here at Daniel Meyer Coliseum. Kansas leading TCU 28 to 16, 741 to go here in the first half. Journey to the tourney. It continues next Saturday with a clash of the ACC. Duke and Syracuse, two head coaches who have won more than 900 career games. It should be a sold-out Carrier Dome. They're talking maybe a potential attendance record at the Carrier Dome. Well, they uh, it happened to be up in upstate New York in the fall, and they were already selling on the famous Marshall Street where we used to hang out. Beat Duke shirts. I mean, come on. Uh, what, better, what is this they again? Be, they better not be beat Duke shirts in Syracuse. They better be. They better say block out Jabari. Right. He had 10 offensive rebounds today, Jabari Parker, in their game against Florida State. So that will be fun next Saturday. Yeah, two great freshmen, Parker, as you mentioned, and Tyler Ennis, the point guard for Syracuse. First free throw by Jarvis Ray is good. It's not a good sign when you call up a coach that you know. And I called up Jim Beheim and asked him for a ticket next Saturday, and he hung up on me. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you coach with him? I don't think he remembers. <laughs> Probably remembers that you beat him a few times while you were no, in Providence. Yeah, not enough. <laughs> But uh, Duke seems to be flying high, especially they just crushed Florida State on the glass today. 27 offensive rebounds from Florida State. Selden to Wiggins, freshman to freshman. And that is 11 now for Andrew Wiggins. Wiggins knocked it out of bounds. Well, you must identify who's on the backside and know what Kansas wants to do. And this is what they want to do. They either want to go to Embiid or Wiggins. And they overload one side. They set that backside screen by Perry Ellis. Beautiful screen against the middle of the zone. Lights out for Kansas. Anderson working on Tharp, and he was fouled by Nadir Tharp. So Key and Anderson back to the line. A lot of people say you don't run a lot of plays against the zone, but when you have high flying athletes and guards with the ability to pinpoint pass up on the rim, Bill Self says when you throw that pass up there, shoot an air ball. Just put it up just a little bit to the right of the rim, and one of our bigs will go get it. But the important piece of that play is screening the middle of the zone and great execution by Kansas. Ninth team foul on Kansas, so. TCU will be shooting two the rest of the half. Hudson Price back into the game for the Horn Frogs. TCU down to just eight scholarship players due to injuries, a couple of transfers not being eligible. Charles Hill ruled out. 
academically ineligible for the semester. Very impressed with Kansas in the first part of this first half with their efficiency on offense, their spacing, their understanding of where they want to attack both man and zone, and also the recognition of the changing defenses. And that goes to Nadir Tharp, who just doing a very good job of quarterbacking every offensive set. Last foul was on Hudson Price, the freshman. You know, you talk about this Kansas team coming of age. Perry Ellis, the leaps he's made from a soft-spoken freshman who really had to work for his minutes last year to a guy who's now the second leading scorer on the team. Yeah, and they're still pounding him away. They want him to be more aggressive, and that's why Bill Self has won all these Big 12 titles because he will not accept anything but the best. And he, he's got nice kids. He wants them to be a little bit grittier out there on the floor, and it's worked. And Ellis has done some very good work for him so far, but he can continue to grow as an enforcer in the lane. Tough matchup right now for TCU. Kavar Shepard on the bench with two fouls. Another starter, Jarvis Ray, on the bench with three fouls. Landon Lucas working on fields. Baby Hook is there. Landon Lucas showing a little promise, but first and foremost, carving out space, using his body and angles down low, and then the soft touch. Lucas getting minutes with Tarek Black injured. Black rolled his ankle Monday against Baylor, and we saw him at shoot around, had a walking boot on. Second foul on Nadir Tharp. There is Tarek Black, the Memphis transfer. Well, Bill Self, you know, you're caught in between. And I think they played this great non-conference schedule, and it's far and away the toughest in the country. And it's made them who they are today. They understand who they are. It's probably the reason they're 5-0 in the league. But also, Bill talked about if we played a little bit lighter schedule, he could have developed some of the younger players a little bit more, like Brandon Green and Landon Lucas and... Frank Mason just give him a few more minutes, but tonight he's going with them. They're very impressive. The foul line has kept TCU in this game. Half the points for TCU from the strike. Wiggins fouled. That's on Hudson Price, his second. Well, Kansas was very fortunate on that possession. I mean, TCU did exactly what. They wanted to do defensively. They forced Selden into a, a tough contested shot on the baseline. They just couldn't come up with the loose ball. Wiggins 11 points. How do you evaluate his freshman season? He's been very, very good. He's, you know, he misses some shots at the rim that you will, he will eventually figure out how to make. He probably coming into this year, he just made everything with no resistance. And he's learning how to finish in traffic. I mean, his rebounding, his defense have been excellent. Uh, his personality is who he is, who he is. And they, they want him to be a little bit more aggressive, but that'll come over time. Let him be. Let him be a freshman. He's a real good player, and he's, and he's getting better. Connor Frankamp in the game for Kansas as Selden got the block on Anderson from behind. You, you can't even imagine Anish being on the cover of Major Magazine with Will Chamberlain and Danny <laughs> before he even uh, enrolled in school. You know, you look at Wiggins' numbers from his freshman season, compare them to what Marcus Smart did as a freshman last year. Ben McLemore was a redshirt freshman at Kansas. Everybody was praising Smart and McLemore, and with Wiggins, it's kind of hum-ho. Not to the Kansas coaches, because he does stuff like that. He just, he's very active on the floor. He understands position defense. He makes open jumpers, and when you need him to go get a big rebound, he does. Wiggins in the win Monday against Baylor, 17 points, seven rebounds. Clock under 10. Anderson, the spin, he falls down and he traveled. 
And there, the length of Kansas is just problematic for TCU. There's no space out there on the floor. Even when you beat your man off the bounce, their rotations are there, and the length is bothersome. Timeout with 5.32 to go here in the first half. TCU uses his second time out of the half. Andrew Wiggins putting his stamp on this one. 12 points for the Jayhawks. Well, I don't know who's evaluated this youngster as having a mediocre year because my evaluation is A+. plus. He's done everything they've asked him to do. You know, at times, the hype has been too much to handle, but he has been a steady rock for Kansas, improving in every piece of the game and understanding what Bill Self wants him to do. Tomorrow afternoon, we've got a women's college hoops doubleheader on ESPNU at 1 Eastern. Memphis visits fifth-ranked Louisville, and at 3, it's Auburn taking on Florida in the SEC. Let's take a look at the women's top 10. Louisville right there at number 5. UConn, Gino Auriemma's team might be on their way to another national title, 20-0, although Notre Dame, Coach Sky Diggins, looks awfully good. Connor Frankamp, freshman out of Wichita, number 23 in the game for Kansas. Wiggins strong to the basket, goes to the left hand, and he draws contact. Just finding that angle, you, he doesn't need much space. You know, the ability, he's got that two guard ability at six foot eight, and off the bounce with the left hand to gather himself at the rim to draw the contact. And we talked about all the hype centering around Wiggins. That narrative has shifted in recent weeks with really Joel Embiid overshadowing Wiggins in terms of the freshman that's most in vogue now. It's funny. In our world, yes. But inside <laughs> the Kansas world, they no, don't care. They don't care at all. They're just trying to win and get better. And Bill Self will tell you it's, it doesn't matter who they're playing. They just want to play. They love playing the game together. And growing together, and I think that's the fun part of coaching a young group that has their eyes wide open about where they're going and what their goals are. Anderson checked by Frank Camp. Individual talent aside, Kansas trending upwards in a lot of ways, not just with their play. Joe Lenardi's got them as a projected one seed, even with four losses. They've got the number one RPI in the country. Frank Camp lines it up. Swish. Biggest lead of the game for Kansas. Let's just pick your poison. Good ball reversal and unselfish play by the Jayhawks. Connor Frank Camp, the all-time leading scorer in the Wichita City League, actually broke Perry Ellis's record. That was his reputation coming to Lawrence. Anderson off the back iron, Selden the rebound. Wiggins for three. Well, where do you go if you're TCU to stop this machine? Right now it is well oiled and moving. Upward on all cylinders. Wiggins has 17, his season high and career high, 26. This might be the breakout game Kansas fans were waiting for. Well, these young freshmen, they weren't here a year ago. I don't even think they knew what happened because they came in here very businesslike, organized, and ready to chalk up another win. They're on their way in the first half. I'm Matt Chick. Coming up at halftime, we'll look at one of the hottest teams in the Big 12 Conference, the surprising Texas Longhorns, as they went for their fifth straight win today. Michigan goes into East Lansing and takes care of Michigan State. And Wichita State eyes Blackjack, looking for win number 21. Over here, all Kansas. The Jayhawks shooting 62% from the floor. TCU just 5 of 21. And Kansas with a two-game lead in the loss column on its competition in the Big 12. Oklahoma, Texas, OK State, all with two losses in league play. TCU searching for that first league win. 
And Tim, when you look at the Big 12, it's been a great league this year. Who are your top five? Well, we think we could win with this group. There's no question about it. But when you're playing the best conference in college basketball, or one of the top two with the Big 10, you've got elite players at the top. There's no question about it. These guys are the elite of the elite. Although Marcus Smart was one for seven today, but LeBron Nash took over for him at Oklahoma State's win over West Virginia. And of course, Cam Ridley, Isaiah Taylor at Texas have been outstanding. Cam Clark at Oklahoma. It's just when you, again, when you have the, one of the best two leagues in college basketball, you've got more than five elite players, but those five are pretty good. Kansas with four of its five starters on the floor. Connor Frankamp in at point guard. Both Nadir Tharp and Frank Mason on the bench with two fouls. Here's Wiggins, who's got 17 in the first half. Make it 19. He is just oozing with confidence tonight. Coming off that little back screen at the top, spaced himself out on the baseline, create space. They backed away. Lights out. Six of seven from the field now, and Kansas shooting almost 64% from the field. Anderson for three, no good. Right now TCU's only answer is to try to get some transition buckets. They've got to try to maybe trap a little bit, see if Kansas will turn it over. They turned it over in the past, but not tonight. Ellis to the left hand, it doesn't go. Rebound to Anderson. Anderson looking to push, fields the up and under. They have to over push any time they can because in the half court, they're really going to struggle to score. And a foul is Embiid takes it strong to the basket. Well, TCU, when they do get a rebound, spacing the court and filling the lanes before Kansas comes on the retreat is very important. And, you know, talking about Kansas, we were talking about during the break a little bit. You know, Bill Self today, you know, I said, okay, put the coaching hat on and tell us, give me a weakness. And everyone's saying you're a superpower again. I know you don't feel that way because you know you can get better. He said, we don't, we turn it over a little bit. Wasted possessions. I want to get rid of some of our wasted possessions. And tonight there's been very, it's been few and far between. They've been very tight and organized in the half court and in transition. They keep this one alive. Wiggins to Embiid. We're starting to see that young man throw up game by game, and they are giant leaps. Well, when he gets inside space and they don't send any support or a double team or even a triple team, this is not fair because that this is what will happen. Look at the space created down low by their spacing on the offensive end. TCU does decides not to send a double team at him. And that's what happens. And again off the missed free throw, Kansas keeps it. Wiggins pulls up short. Last touch on Wiggins, so TCU gets it back. Wiggins seven field goals in this first half. TCU as a team with just six. So much for Kansas overlooking TCU coming off the gauntlet the Jayhawks were on playing arguably the next five teams in terms of who's the best in the Big 12 conference pecking order. Fields there for the putback. You thought maybe could there be a let up by Kansas going into this game? They erased any signs of that early. Well, I think when you're so young, none of that happens because you just want to play the next game. Especially when you've had a few days off and we have guys like that on the floor. <laughs> Wayne Seldon's got four. It's a 22 point edge for Kansas. Devoured by Kansas, and here's Embiid running the floor. The big fella. I wanted to see him drop that dime. <laughs> Forget Elijah, but we're going to say Magic Johnson. 
just started here with his great help side defense. He just has the steal. He's looking for somebody to dish it to. Nobody ever kind of runs away and says, we, can, we have confidence in you to do this. We know what you can do. First free throw good. That last foul on Hudson Price. Already four fouls on Price. So Price checks out. Jarvis Ray, who's got three fouls back into the game. We well, still haven't seen Kavar Shepard return for TCU. He's on the bench with two. The Horn Frogs do not have a lot of front court depth. Only two players on the roster taller than 6'7. And again, on that last defensive play by MB, that's another piece of his game that we usually don't see shot blockers show. Just kind of out on the floor, showing, helping on the help and recover, and poking his hand in there for the steal. Final minute of the first half, and Frank Camp called for the foul on Anderson. But again, he's so fundamentally sound that he's a sponge to what Kansas and Bill Self and his staff teaches on a day to day basis and that's what they teach when someone drives into your area and you're out on the wing you show and you help and recover and they showed the ball and he just clipped it. And beat at a great game against Oklahoma State last weekend where he went off for 18 points. Or rather 13 points 11 rebounds and a big 12 freshman record eight block shots actually tied a big 12 freshman record time out Kansas 51 29 Jayhawks up 40 seconds to go in the half Kansas looking to make it six you know in the big 12 a lot of talk coming into the game of course about how the Jayhawks lost here at the DMC last year the first part of the epilogue to that story was Kansas then played TCU later on in the season in Lawrence. They won that game 74 to 48, outscoring TCU 38 to 9 in the first half. Seems like many moons ago for TCU at this point, but again, Trent Johnson is a proven winner and got some guys sitting out that will help him. He's had some injuries that have been devastating to this. Well, but the one thing is they play hard and they will be here down the road. Meanwhile, Wiggins and NB, they're here at least for the short term. I mean, they, they walk onto the floor and just poise, confidence, and just they don't say a word out there. They just play the game. Seldon foul before the shot. That's on Parrish, and that's his third. So foul trouble for TCU. Parrish has three. Ray has three. Shepard has been on the bench for a while now with two. And Hudson Price with four. Wayne Seldon has become in some ways the forgotten man in this freshman class at least amongst the freshmen who were starting. He had a couple of big games to start Big 12 play. In fact 44 points combined in his first two conference games and then he's been quiet over the last three just 23 total points in those contests. Well, I, you know we can break down everyone's game and could say this guy's had an off night or that guy but they have so many answers on the floor and so much depth on the one off the bench that he and Tharp have really settled in nicely, not only offensively, but defensively, pressuring at the top and understanding Kansas system. All Kansas in this first half, 61.5% from the field, four of six from beyond the arc, and plus six on the glass. Parrish beats the horn. And TCU will go into the locker room on that note with the Horn Frogs staring at a 21 point deficit. A good drive into the middle of the lane, draw the defense. Anderson does a nice job of kicking out to his backcourt mate. And we need to get more of those, get loose and, and transition in the half court. Get him. Eighth-ranked Kansas dominating the first half against TCU. This is 
in no way, shape, or form anything close to what happened in this building a year ago. 53-32, Kansas leading TCU at the half in East Rock, Tim Welsh. For folks wanting to see maybe Andrew Wiggins' breakout game, this could be it. He was sensational in the first half. Well, what didn't he do? But you know, the thing he did, he did it in all certain spots, different spots on the floor, whether it's transition, that middle game, that quick body control, the ability just to find that open slot. His teammates found him as well in the back of the zone coming over the top as a trailer in transition. Just plays with a unbelievable you know, slow pace, but just blows by you when he has it. 19 points, 6 of 8 from the field for the freshman from Canada. And Kansas shot better than 61% from the field in that first half. 4 of 6 from beyond the arc. TCU bailed out in large part by free throws. The Horned Frogs just 8 of 26 from the field in the first 20 minutes, but 14 of 16 from the line. Well, this game also allowed Bill Self to use a lot of his freshmen that he's wanted to develop over the last month. And here again, right out of the... Right out of the locker room, the special over the zone. Embiid with 13 points now. He and Wiggins with 32 points combined. TCU, 32 points total. That's a special play they worked on earlier today, and we've seen it all night. But again, they've been able to use their freshmen at one point. They had five freshmen in. Played a lot of the last 10 minutes with four freshmen on the floor. Sheld in the lob for Wiggins. He regains control. Sheldon from the elbow, and that goes for Wayne Sheldon. He's got eight. And no let up with this group. They just love to play basketball. Smiles on their face. They love to pass the basketball and attack. Kavar Shepard back into the game for TCU. Played just eight minutes in the first half due to foul trouble. And Shepard no good as Ellis grabs the board. All well, the offensive stats are there, but there's been no relent Kansas defensively. And right now all of Lawrence holding its collective breath as Embiid goes down holding that left knee. <laughs> On top of it, Joel Embiid was called for the personal foul. Embiid stays in the game, able to shake it off. Kavar Shepard just stepped in his path. Embiid was just trying to make a simple cut across the lane in their transition. He was going ball side block, and he extends the arm and picks up the foul and banged up. And now Embiid to the bench. Bill Self's not a happy coach over there. He didn't like the call or the fact that Shepard stepped right in his path, kind of blindsided Embiid. Jamari Trailer into the game for Kansas with Embiid out. Here's Shepard working on Trailer, and that doesn't go. Wiggins the board. Good defense that time by TCU. Ray forces the turnover. Parrish fires. And that one falls for Brandon Parrish, the freshman from Arlington. I was about to say, though, on that previous possession, on the miss by Shepard, he's got to understand that Embiid's not in the game and not shoot that little fadeaway jump hook. He's got to attack the rim without the shot blocker's presence in the game. Wiggins from the wing. Trailer tracks the offensive rebound. Selden down low. His shot blocked by Shepard, but he follows it for the two. Just relentless Kansas, not to be denied. Jarvis Ray playing with three fouls. Senior over Selden. Another rebound by Ellis. And Wiggins finishes at the other end. He's got 21. 
Timeout TCU. 17-13 to go here in the first half. Kansas picking up right where they left off. On the attack, unselfish play, and the athletes at the rim to finish with ease. With Tim Welsh and Schropp, Joel Embiid back on the floor for Kansas. He gave folks back in Lawrence heart palpitations when he went down clutching that left knee. But Bill Self jumped out of his seat and started barking at the ref. He had, to, he had to get mad at somebody when something frustrating happens. And I think he was frustrated because he thought that Shepard kind of stepped in his path and he didn't see him coming. But it was, it was actually a good solid play by Shepard. Just an unfortunate thing. They banged up knees and good to see him back, big fella. Now Shepard's got to try to take the ball and be a little bit more aggressive. Maybe face up in that mid post area against MB to challenge him a little bit more. Shepard really the lone true post player on this TCU roster who can suit up for Trent Johnson. Nice move by Parrish along the baseline. That was the one time Joel Embiid didn't see ball on the weak side and stayed stuck to his man. Embiid got Shepard in the air then lost the ball. Key and Anderson eight points in the first half all from the free throw line. Look at Embiid getting all the way out on the perimeter to cover Shepard, and that forced the bad pass. Another thing you don't see big shot blockers do, that ability to slide up on uh, face up forward and, and get up in him and pressure him, with not only with his body, but his arms and his length as well. The comparison that we hear most often is Hakeem Olajuwon. And during Olajuwon's career, the scouting report was always a center in a guard's body. How much of that do you see with Embiid? I see a lot of that, just like that move right there, the jump hook. But, you know, defensively, the shot blocking is there, but he's got some other attributes maybe Olajuwon didn't have as far as ability out on the floor to guard on the wing area. I should say with Olajuwon, a guard in the center's body. Well, the way he comes out on the perimeter and helps out, slides his feet, his ability to guard smaller players that can put the ball in the deck. He reminds me of a, of a little bit of a Kevin Garnett in that regard. Right, last foul on Kavar Shepard, his third. Don't forget, we've got a doubleheader on ESPNU Sunday. Clemson, North Carolina comes your way at 6 Eastern. The Tigers have lost their last 56 trips to Chapel Hill. And then Cal and UCLA in the Pac-12 at 8 Eastern, both on ESPNU. Embiid's only been playing basketball for a couple of years. The story's been well circulated now. He got the copy of Hakeem Olajuwon's greatest moves on VHS and has used that to hone his game. A foul on Embiid. His third. As Kansas grows and Bill Self gains more confidence with his group and what they want to do as as a whole he'll be able to expound his playbook where they can run a little bit more high low game with Ellis and Embiid where with Wiggins on one wing and Selden on the other they will be very dangerous offensively but I think the, the growth that Bill's looking for not only offensively be more solid waste of possessions but defensively as well to get out and create a little bit more havoc and turn people over Trailer to the floor, no whistle. As the shot clock is under 10. Selden, open three. Christian Gore gets the rebound, shaded by Wiggins. Good job by TCU, shifting the zone, protecting the lane, contesting the shooter. Fields posting up on Ellis. There's the double. To fields over Ellis. Selden able to rebound the ball. Selden strong to the bucket 
And Bill Self has got to like that. Yeah, it started with their defense, though, and he's just TCU patient, but it's nothing there because of the length of Kansas, and then they turn those missed shots into easy back baskets at the other end. Anderson fouled by Tharp Wayne Sheldon. One of the freshmen for this Kansas team, Bill Self, wants him to be aggressive, wants him to look for a shot like that. 14 points, six rebounds for Kansas. The freshman continues to mature, continues to get better. We alluded earlier to the comparisons to Hakeem Olajuwon. You look at Olajuwon and Dikembe Mutombo's numbers from when they were freshmen. Tell you what, and beat stacks up pretty well. I would think that uh, this man is going to do okay. He's, uh, you know, and the thing about him, you see the talent level, but we talked about it earlier. The sponge for learning, uh, the ability to play fundamentally the right way in the post, and I think that goes without saying that he didn't have bad habits from playing in bad programs or with bad coaches as a youngster and had some good coaching at the high school level when he came over here, and now he's, he's with one of the best in Bill Self. Now, one piece of context to better capture that story, when Olajuwon and Matumbo were playing, guys didn't go pro after one year. So there were more quality two, three, four-year guys in college basketball when those guys played than is the case currently. Absolutely, but we all know what we see. <laughs> we see a guy that is can't miss. over Brandon Green. He's a guy that TCU wants to build its program around. Parrish and Kavar Shepard, the two talented freshmen that Trent Johnson has. A good recognition of the trap down on the baseline and ball, quick ball reversal for the open jumper. Parrish with 12 to lead the Horn Frogs. Trailer baseline on Shepard. Ellis snares the rebound. Tharp scoreless in this game. Now Trailer. Over Shepard for two. Well, Jamari Trailer has been a force off the bench for Bill Self. Just a guy down in the low box that's not afraid to put his nose into the action. Shepard gives it up to Fields. He has it stripped. Six turnovers for Kansas. They averaged 16 in conference play. Follow not there by Selden. And TCU able to save it. Keen Anderson down the lane. Another rebound by Perry Ellis, who's cleaning up the glass. You just see the length, the size, the athleticism of Kansas just dominated on that last possession. Three blue shirts with elbows over the rim. Trailer fouled on the way up with 13.06 to go. NBA insider Chad Ford puts out his big board top prospects for the June draft. One and two right now, Embiid and Wiggins. Bill Self has never had a player go number one overall. He could have the top two picks. And going into the season, a lot of folks felt, well, Wiggins would go number one, and there was a chance Embiid could go number one the following year. Well, that remains to be seen. If you talk to people within inside the Kansas program, it's he's just strutting along, enjoying college life, enjoying getting better every day with his teammates and his coaches. So, yeah, yeah. kind of cringe when I see that. It's just like, let him play. We don't need the big board yet. Uh, and then that's kind of always been what's been behind the scenes nationally when Kansas is discussed. Embiid and Wiggins and how they project and if you've lost sight of how this team is playing since conference play began they've been as good as anybody in the country there's no question about it and again it's their the non-conference schedule built them for this if they hadn't played it they may have got clipped at uh, Iowa State or against Oklahoma State when they made a rush at them in the second half instead they've been dominant in this conference away from the ball it's on Wiggins even when you look at the four non-conference losses for Kansas 
Villanova, Colorado, Florida, and San Diego State. Three of those teams are currently in the top seven in the AP poll. Well, you go to Florida, you go to Colorado, that gets you ready to go to Iowa State. So, you know, a lot of these teams don't play a tough road game till their league, and Bill Self's not afraid. He took the losses early. Now they're benefiting from it. Christian Gould from downtown, a sixth three-pointer of the season. And an offensive foul against Wiggins. Three on Wiggins. 30-second timeout by Bill Self. Kansas shooting almost 60% from the field in this game. And uh, Tim, you alluded to it, turnovers, averaging 16 in conference play to just 15 assists. Today, 17 assists. Seven turnovers. Yeah, they're clicking. It starts with Nadir Tharp, but you know it doesn't. It's not always built around the point guard or blame with turnovers. It's about five guys playing cohesively, and they are certainly doing that. This Kansas team against TCU tonight. In all reality, Kansas is doing what they were expected to do. Five and zero in the Big 12. TCU is zero and six. This was the expectation, but when you look at their full body of work in conference play, I mean, the wins, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Baylor, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, Iowa State. You look at those five conference wins, and that's against a pretty good Big 12, and that was Kansas going through the gauntlet and really separating itself from the pack in this league as Michael Williams gets the jumper to drop. And allows Bill Self to mix and match his lineup and play a road game in the league in the middle of the second half and he has four freshmen on the floor wiggins is fouled fran camp mason trailer wiggins and landon lucas the five for kansas well, tcu just if they can space the floor Especially without the shot blocker and beat in the game, they'll have more opportunity, but it's few and far between. They just they're devastated with the injuries to Devontae Abram and Aaron Durley, both in the offseason, and Charles Hill Jr., academically ineligible. They've just been last two years seemingly just a string of bad luck luck injury-wise. And Amrick Fields hasn't been totally healthy all season. He's coming off a torn ACL and then he missed. What, four more games with a broken hand? Here's Shepard over Lucas. Kavar Shepard was actually offered a scholarship by Bill Self, and in one of those instances where things worked out best for both teams, Shepard ends up going to TCU, and Bill Self told us had Shepard accepted, there's a good chance Joel Embiid isn't playing for Kansas. Trailer on the inside, and he's fouled on the way up. You talk about the building blocks for this TCU program. Number one is where it starts. Kavar Shepard, the highest rated recruit ever to come to Fort Worth. Well, if you just go by the reactions of both coach, it might be tough to tell who's actually winning this game and what the scoring margin is. Well, both these guys have had many seasons of success. You know, Trent Johnson taking his lumps the last couple of years, rebuilding TCU. But I don't know who's who's winning. They're both uptight. They're both cranky, annoyed, miserable, <laughs> not happy. Yeah, the outcome of this one not really in question. 69 to 48. Kansas on top of TCU. Attendance for today's game: 7,494. Largest crowd ever at Daniel Meyer Coliseum. This arena will get a facelift after the season. It's about a $50 million project. TCU will play its home games elsewhere next season, a to-be-determined location or locations. And then they will return to play in a renovated new look arena for the 2015-2016 season. And the hope is that's when this program can start competing in the Big 12. There's no question about it. You know, you know, if you know Trent Johnson, he just, he's a winner. That's why they brought him here. And, but you've got to do it the right way. And there's no quick fixes. 
And they're doing things the right way. They're going to give him the facilities he needs to compete in one of the best conferences in the country. Michael Williams checked by Frank Mason. Ray on the floor, met at the rim, and he draws the foul. That was a nice, hard push to the rim by Ray. Very athletic. He is third, personal foul. 16 foul against Kansas. Ray, the lone senior starter. It's a young TCU team. Four freshmen in the rotation. You know, for most of the year, defense hasn't been really an issue for TCU. It's been scoring. They've struggled to shoot the ball last in the Big 12 in points per game. And they've struggled rebounding because they don't have a lot of size and don't have a lot of front court depth. You don't have the physicality you need, and that's where Abram would be just a huge player for them out for the year with the ACL. I heard it on their trip to Canada over the summer and it's just hard to replace you know when you're rebuilding the program you just need everything kind of go to go perfect the first couple years until you can really add enough players to overcome an injury Wiggins somehow got the ball in his hands Wiggins is 6'8 but you just see the length of his arms he plays a 6'10 type wingspan. Here comes Anderson the other way off the turnover. Fields open three. Rebound to Mason. Frank Mason to the 10, the freshman from Petersburg, Virginia, who's the second leading scorer all time at his high school. Number one, Moses Malone. And he gets the ball from A to Z very quickly and just a fierce defensive play. Ray lost it out of bounds, another turnover for TCU. Frank Mason known for his defensive presence, but also good inside and out move with the left hand and the finish. He's rock solid, tough. Great backup point guard. Mason in the win Monday night against Baylor, 9.6 assists, one turnover. But what impressed Bill Self the most was his defense on Brady Heslip. He, he comes off the bench, but he doesn't really play like a backup. He's, he's really one of their starters because they need him every night to be that solid guard off the bench. Embiid working on Shepard. That time Embiid could not get the roll and Shepard the rebound. There was no angle to the rim at all, but somehow he found some space going with the left hand. It was good defense by Shepard. Shepard working on Embiid who pokes that one away. Shepard. Nice face-up game. But... And an offensive foul. That's not and his that game. That is five on Shepard. He's done. Yeah, that's not his game. He's got to he's got to go down to the low box and try to post up and maybe step away. But you take two and three dribbles against a good defensive team and against a player who, again, very rare that a big-time shot blocker can go out onto the floor and guard somebody off the bounce. But again, another piece of the puzzle. Check that box. What's amazing is for a big guy how comfortable Embiid is when he's guarding other big men out on the perimeter or even on a switch. He's got a guard or a forward out there. He would really be able to do some things if he can go out and attack, maybe gamble a little bit more defensively. Foul on Jamari Trailer, so TCU gets it. 9.07 to go. Tough day for Kavar Shepard. Better days ahead. He's a talented player. He's got to learn how to carve out space down in that low box. He's got a long, athletic, very skilled body, but he's got to understand how to get a little lower and get a wider base in the lane so they can pitch the ball to him down in the low box and he can attack from there because he's got good skill. Christian Gore hits. That's Ellis 
from about 18. Well, Kansas wants him to do that. They want him to step out and be a little bit more of a pick and pop guy because you see that ability. He's got that smooth stroke from the mid range area. Six to go. Well, TCU, as you can see, and if you watch the entire game, has been beat pretty much every aspect of the game except one. And the effort has not wavered at all for TCU. They've matched the effort of Kansas. They just don't have the size or skill at every position that Kansas has, but. I give them a ton of credit. They are just they keep punching. Jamari Trailer checks in for Embiid. Four starters and Trailer in for Kansas. Parrish, Fields, Ray, Anderson, and Gore, the five for TCU. Double digit rebounds for Perry Ellis. Wiggins down the lane and a finger roll for two. And that's what TCU has to make a major adjustment moving forward. Their help side defense has been a little bit lacking. Shouldn't be able to take the ball. I don't care who you are from the outside the three point line all the way to the rack. 25 for Wiggins, one shy of his career high. He had 26 earlier in the year against Florida. Jarvis Ray knocks it down, 76-55. Six points for Ray, his first field goal. I'm impressed with Kane Anderson as well. He's creating a lot of things. He's trying to do a lot out there on the floor. He keeps pushing and making plays for TCU. Wiggins fouled by Parrish. Coming up, TCU's three-point plan to success. But first, we check in with Matt Schick. Thanks, Anish. We are about set to go in Logan, Utah. That's Winston Shepard with San Diego State. Winners of 16 in a row. San Diego State, Utah State coming up. Back to Fort Worth when we come back. Trent Johnson is building for the future at TCU. He's got two great foundation pieces in the freshman Parrish and Shepard. Help next year in Chris Washburn and Trey Ziegler transfers. And then the final piece, a refurbished, remodeled arena. Daniel Meyer Coliseum set to undergo a renovation of about $50 million. It will reopen in 2015 and 2016. Construction will begin at the conclusion of this season at TCU. We'll have to find another venue or multiple venues to play its home games next year. Well, it's painful to go through it when you have to rebuild a program, but you've got to have patience. You've got to have support the administration. Uh, you've got to have kids that believe in what you're doing, and all of that is here. It's in place, and you have to have a plan on top of it, and, and that is in place as well. All you have to do is walk outside of this building and take a quick glance to your left and you see they're serious about athletics with the football stadium and football but stadiums a gorgeous facility one of the best in the big 12. Tomorrow afternoon on ESPNU a women's college hoops doubleheader Memphis Louisville comes your way at one Eastern and then in the SEC Auburn and Florida all a part of we back Hat week on the U. Kansas on its way to a 6-0 mark in the Big 12. Wiggins, the lob, the trailer. For a second, I thought he shot, shot a little set shot air ball, but that's what he was supposed to do, shoot the air ball just to the right of the rim. We saw them practicing that very play at shoot around earlier today. That was a set play on the base, and they set that back screen on the back of the zone. Just perfect execution. Just another piece of Wiggins game on display. Parrish over Wiggins. One freshman against the other. Wiggins taps the rebound to himself. 
Finally, Fields able to retrieve. Gore all the way to the 10, and that's going to be a goal 10. This is perfect execution on a baseline out of bounds. You'll see the ball gets swung. What they're going to do is they're going to set one screen on the as the uh, man runs through the baseline. As the ball reverses, they'll set one screen on the middle of the zone, and then they'll set another screen on the back side of the zone. Just perfect execution. Kavar Shepard is fouled out, so no true big guy to patrol that back line for TCU. Count it for Frank Mason. Blocking foul on Ray, his fourth. Well, Frank Mason could probably put on the football pads and be a, a fullback or a running back because he just explodes with that first step with power to the rim. There was some thought earlier in the season that Mason could maybe supplant Nadir Tharp as the team's point guard before the season's over, but to Tharp's credit, He's really stepped up his game in conference play. Well, experience means so much with, uh, with this group, especially with all the other freshmen, the three freshmen they start, and then you've got all the freshmen they bring in. Tharp has established himself as the leader, not only on the court, but as a leader off the court as well. 6.04 to go second half. We take a look at our Wendy's wooden watch, Andrew Wiggins tonight. 25 points, 8 of 13 from the field, 5 rebounds, 4 assists. He was one of 25 players Named to the Wooden Award midseason list, Joel Embiid conspicuously absent, but he could find himself on the list of 15 finalists that comes out on March 8th. We should reveal everyone that votes. We, we need some of the voting reveal. How do, you not, how do you not put that guy on the midseason award? Embiid, by the way, just picked up his fifth foul, so he's done. Shepard is also fouled out for TCU. Some other guys I'd like to argue for if I had a chance. But I don't have a vote. No good from Selden. Ray chases down the rebound. Anderson in front of the pack. And he just beats Selden for two. And again, TCU continues to play hard and feisty. They're not backing down. They're playing tough defense. This undermanned up front. Landon Lucas. His pass gets away. Ian Anderson or thought about the three nearly traveled now Williams for three left it short Bill Self's not happy he doesn't want this game to become a summer pickup game he wants to stay tight with their organization and their fundamentals Andrew White into the game for Kansas wearing number three all right a couple of snubs from the wooden midseason list what do you have how about Sean Kilpatrick at Cincinnati just Outstanding. Let's, let's reward him for being a senior who stayed in college and has just helped his team every year win. He is absolutely should be on it. And Bryce Cotton at Providence is just a joy to watch. I mean, every night all he does is get 20 points. That's all. And he's playing point guard position, leads his team. Uh, he's one of the top guys in the Big East and assists as well. He's. Just a terrific college player. He should be on the list as well. Lamar Patterson of Pitts got a case. He had a huge game today against Maryland. He, not only that, he's one of the most improved players in college basketball. Him and Justin Jackson from Cincinnati. New 35 for TCU. Ray. In traffic for two. Well, that's the big fella in there, manning the middle. TCU smells a little blood. They're opening up the floor and attacking the rack. Entry pass Lucas. Here's White. And blocking foul against TCU. Fourth foul on Christian Gore. And 
Andrew White can't get the free throw. Another rebound from Perry Ellis. White tries the three. Ellis make that Lucas the rebound and the putback. Landon Lucas has given Bill Self some nice minutes. Another freshman just comes in and does his job around the rim for Kansas. Timeout by TCU with 3.58 to go. The freshmen have just come in and sometimes four freshmen, sometimes five. It doesn't matter who Bill Self puts in. They just do their job. They set screens, they get the ball up on the rim, and they just attack, just crushing TCU on the offensive glass. Luke is seeing some more minutes today with Tark Black out with an ankle injury. Black rolled the ankle against Baylor Monday night. And Lucas making the most of his playing time. Well, Joe Lenardi, he's already busy with the bracketology and the latest itinerations of his projected bracket. Right now, he's got seven Big 12 teams in the field of 68, although the way Baylor's going, they may not be there for long. And when you're one in five in conferences, you've got a lot of work to do. Baylor right now is just... Their defense is lacking in the Big 12, giving them almost 50% field goal percentage in conference games. First basket of the second half for Fields. He's got 13. Lucas on the inside. Again, Wiggins with the pinpoint delivery on the skip pass, and then the pinup inside by Lucas. Christian Gore slow to get up. All Kansas here in Fort Worth, 84-65. Jayhawks. All fired up at Utah State, ready for the game against San Diego State. That game will begin on ESPN3. Bust open your iPads and laptops if you want to watch it. We'll begin on ESPNU as soon as we're done here in Kansas. Matt, 303 to go here in Fort Worth, all Kansas, 84-65. Andrew Wiggins, 25 points for the Jayhawks to go along with five rebounds and five assists. Wiggins' 25-point effort, one shy of a career high in points. He had 26 earlier this season against Florida. And Bill Self has told his freshman, be aggressive, take the ball to the basket. You watch Wiggins, it's almost that he can at least get to the foul line at will. And the impressive thing watching him tonight is that he almost every time down the floor runs to the correct spot. He has a nice feel for where the ball is and what side of the floor it is or where it is on his side of the floor and understanding where the defense is and how it shifts. And he makes himself available and open. He just doesn't stand still. He has a good feel of moving without the ball but no wasted motion to his game that's for sure and no wasted talk either he just has a stoic look and just plays the game christian gore who transferred to tcu from brown with his 10th point of the game came in averaging less than four kansas doesn't say much on the floor just but they do what they have to do with each other, and there's, again, it's a business trip. Take care of business and move on. You know, we asked Bill Shelf about his team potentially maybe overlooking TCU, and he just very matter-of-factly said, you know, that's not in this team's DNA. They don't really know any better. They don't differentiate the opponents. It's maybe a veteran team could. Well, exactly, and that... A fun part of coaching a group like that. Number one, they're so talented, but they just want to just get better. It's it's the big picture, and this is just another victim. Just take care of it and move on to the next and try to get better. The ceiling for this Kansas team keeps getting higher and higher by the day, by the week. And they are playing as hard defensively as they did in the first five minutes of this game. Fighting through screens, talking, active. Oh, 
Brandon Green and Connor Frankamp, a pair of freshmen at the scorer's table for Kansas. Wiggins fouled on the drive. Kansas in the double bonus, so Andrew Wiggins will shoot two. And if he makes both, he'll have a new career high. Bill Self will not let his team relax any game, any time, but respect your opponent as well. And I know that the Kansas staff respects that TCU will play hard and they continue to play hard. So if Kansas relaxed at all in this game, this could have been, been a game in the last six, seven minutes because TCU continues to attack. Brandon Parrish, one of TCU's prized freshmen, just fouled out. So both Shepard and Parrish, the two freshman starters for TCU, have fouled out. And Wiggins with that free throw has matched a career high with 26. New career high in points for Andrew Wiggins. Five assists today. That's a career high. A lot of Kansas fans in attendance. They're basically the ones who've remained, at least most of them. And Wiggins gets a nice hand. They're happy and they're, they're happy in Toronto tonight. <laughs> Finally, we see a little bit of uh, Kansas loosening up. <laughs> they don't want to loosen up too much. The old coach won't like that. Key and Anderson left it short. He's just one of seven from the field. Camp for three. And the rebound to Anderson, still looking to push. TCU playing till the whistle. And the finger roll drops for Anderson. Kansas seemed a little sluggish in their win over Baylor. They just fought through it and persevered to get the win, and they had played that long stretch. But I think these days off this week has helped Kansas regain their energy. They came out tonight with a lot of life in their legs. Let's take a look at tonight's freshman focus. Wiggins and Embiid both delivered. Embiid fouling out 14 points, six boards, three blocks. Wiggins a career high 27 points and also a career high five assists. They don't force anything. And it starts on the defensive end of the floor. That just created all their energy and transition and then up on the glass. They're just too dominant for TCU. Bill Self going to the bottom of his bench here in the final minute. Brandon Green, the freshman from Georgia, with the basket and the foul. Brandon Green hit a nice jumper in the first half, and he's also one of those freshmen that just oozes with potential. Bill Self wants to continue to get in more minutes, but he's been very valuable this season and a quick learner as well. You can see his ability to put the ball on deck, and we saw his stroke from the perimeter earlier in the game. Green was the Gatorade player in the state of Georgia, Gatorade player of the year in the state of Georgia coming out of high school. Outstanding student, 4.0 GPA. That's the picture perfect stroke. Long. Six points for Green. That's a new career high for him. TCU has some time to recover. They're not back in action until next Saturday when they'll take on Texas Tech in Lubbock. Kansas will take on Iowa State Wednesday. That game will be on ESPNU. Now TCU had some illness going through the team as well. They'll just have to keep grinding it out. Trent Johnson just, they'll fight. They just need to reload with some bodies next season. Meanwhile, Kansas continues to roll. That's now six wins in a row. The Jayhawks are 6-0 and 
in conference play, 91-69, your final score here in Fort Worth. For Tim Welsh and our entire crew, I'm Eddie Schrapp. We wish you a good night from Fort Worth. Now to Logan, Utah for San Diego State and Utah State.